I'm Scott Allen Miller, it's the 15th of April, 2023. This is my vlog of life living in Nicaragua. Today, I'm going to address the problems of going from beach to beach along the coast and trying to find a beach or community or village that you're interested in. It can be more challenging than you think. We'll get to that right after the bump. Before we delve into today's topic, a happy birthday to Paul who turns 59 today. Today, okay, we're going to talk about moving from beach to beach in Nicaragua. A lot of people, when you're coming to Nicaragua, you're, or if you're looking at moving, you're probably looking at beaches because, let's face it, Nicaragua has fantastic beaches and a lot of them. If you look carefully at a map, Nicaragua is roughly 50% coast. When you're talking oceanic, it also has two really large interior lakes, plus some rivers, but not, not too much in the way of rivers. But because of that, there is so much waterfront that that tends to be a major reason that people are considering the country. And traditionally, mostly because of pirates, it was not customary to live along the water. So most cities are not directly on the water, Granada being one of the closest, Managua being a new city was built on a smaller lake, uh, Leon sits not too far from the ocean, about 17 kilometers, but in general you're not going to have major population centers sitting directly on the water, and that means there's a lot of ocean and lakefront that is actually still available or is reasonably affordable. It is simply not as popular to sit on the water in Nicaragua as you would expect. But mostly, that's just for historic reasons. It's not because there's anything wrong with that waterfront. So, a lot of expats looking to move to Nicaragua or Nicaraguans who are looking for a second home are very interested in the beach life because it's really affordable and fantastic and the variety is great. We have a reasonably large Pacific coast and extremely large Caribbean coast and, as I said, very large lake coasts and Ometepe Island on the inside of the lake is a huge island that is all coast. So it just keeps going. The amount of coast is crazy. But what we're mostly concerned about is Pacific Coast. When people say, say that they're coming to Nicaragua and they're interested in looking at beach communities, they're talking about the open ocean on the Pacific Coast. Once in a while you get someone who's going to be looking at the Caribbean coast that has its own problems. Let's start with that, actually. The Caribbean coast is part of the Mosquito Coast. It is a autonomous region, or actually in the case of Nicaragua, multiple autonomous regions that sit along the Caribbean. They predominantly speak English Creole, much like Jamaica, and they have very few large communities, Bluefields being the largest, and it barely qualifies as a small city. Most everything along there are small villages. So, as you're looking out there, the total number of things available is very few. It's simply a relatively undeveloped region. Partially, this is because the jungle goes right up to the water and there's a lot of swamp. There isn't a lot of traditional oceanfront that people would be interested in. So, it makes it less desirable. Importantly, it's really far from major cities and very far from any international airport. Even getting to and from populated west coast or Pacific Nicaragua generally, generally requires a full day's drive on a southern highway, and then getting anywhere in the country is an additional drive north from the southern point because it's, that road runs along the Costa Rican border. So you really tend to get an isolationist feeling out on the Mosquito Coast. Some people really prefer it. So don't discount it completely, but it is a completely different experience. And when people say that they're looking at the Nicaraguan coast, that is essentially never what they mean. Also, on the Caribbean side are two small islands known as the Corn Islands, and no, that is not translated. Their actual name is Corn Islands, not Islas de Maiz, because it is, like I said, the Mosquito Coast and an English-speaking region, so the names are generally in English first. That is a much more expensive and much more remote location. The islands are out in the Caribbean. You either need a long boat ride or a small flight out to them. They are roughly east of Bluefields, in southeastern Nicaragua. 
So that is an option, but again, very, very few people are going to be considering those islands. You would be considering those if you wanted Nicaraguan uh, legal and political status, but you were interested in a Caribbean island lifestyle. That is a real thing. Some people do want that, but they are extremely small, extremely isolated Caribbean islands. Uh, so most people who are looking at Caribbean island li living are going to look at much larger islands that have more resources on them. But some people do truly love the Corn Islands as a place to settle. And so worth a consideration, but be aware that's not what people mean. And especially when we're saying driving along the coast, you're not driving to the Corn Islands in any way whatsoever. Okay, so what we're really talking about is driving the Pacific Coast. That is with the largest main settlement being San Juan del Sur in the south, working your way up through the beaches of Managua, Leon, and eventually Chinandega. This Pacific Coast waterfront is absolutely beautiful and offers an array of different options. There are large settlements like San Juan del Sur that's so big that it starts to feel a little bit like a small city. It's more comparable to a Bluefields, but it is an older settlement and this is West Coast Nicaragua, so very Spanish, a very colonial culture, not the British mosquito culture. Uh, so this is more of what people are thinking of Nicaragua and San Juan del Sur being far and away by absolute orders of magnitude, the most popular place for expats, both tourists and relocators, coming to the uh, to Nicaragua uh, and to the beach specifically, uh, this is what is in most people's mind. And importantly, San Juan del Sur is the only significant bay or baya in the country. And that means it is full of beautiful swimming, a protected bay, calm waters, has sand that goes out a long way. Uh, it curves around and has unique views. Those are things you're really not going to find anywhere else in Nicaragua. That's important. People who are looking for that, you are pretty much limited to San Juan del Sur. There are some other bays. Most of them are directly adjacent to San Juan del Sur. They are much smaller and less habited, habitated, but if that's something that you're looking for, you have a couple options, but they're all in that general region. You are going to be looking at southwestern Rivas. There are some non-bay beaches in the area as well. Those are uh, regular flat beaches up against the Pacific Ocean. When you get away from a bay, if you're not familiar with the south-facing Pacific, now we face roughly southwest throughout all of Nicaraguan's coast, even the bays face that direction, but they are protected as bays, uh, you're going to get quite rough waters. This entire coast, that includes southern Mexico, all of Guatemala, all of El Salvador, all of Nicaragua, all of Costa Rica, except for protected bays and very isolated circumstances, is going to be that nearly identical southwestern facing open Pacific Ocean. Notable exceptions, San Juan del Sur in Nicaragua, the uh, Bay of Fonseca, which is predominantly Honduras. That's why I didn't mention them. They do not have open Pacific, even though they also face southwest. They have islands inside the Bay of Fonseca, and that uh, is 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 very protected and completely different water. You're not going to surf in there. Uh, you get a different experience. It's also a very small coast, and we don't normally think of it as part of the main coast. We think of it as a separate coast in a way. Uh, Panama, the water turns significantly, or the land turns and faces more southward uh, and gets a different type of wave. So you're much less likely to get surfing down there, much more swimming and calmer waters. Uh, it's just, it's a different experience as well. So it's this Southern Mexico and traditional Central America, uh, except Honduras, have this specific uh, Pacific uh, facing wave culture. Those waves are great for surfing, but they make swimming a bit dangerous. Most of all those coasts are rocky, so you do have risks of being bashed against rocks. Not so much that you can't go swimming, not so much that surfing isn't a major thing here. These are big surf areas, uh, El Salvador especially, but Nicaragua and Costa Rica for sure, major, major surf destinations, uh, but they do carry additional risks. So if you're looking for calm, super safe, they don't have that. And most importantly, the entire zone has very dramatic riptides. So if you're not a strong swimmer, it can be quite dangerous. Of course, like in Las Penitas, 
We don't have a bay, but we do have an estuary. And a lot of people who don't know how to swim or small children will go out there. And it's very, very calm waters, but it's still ocean water that's coming up over the dunes. And it's normally only for me as an adult, the water generally doesn't get deeper than my knees. So it's safe even for very small children. There's no there's ripples, not waves. Nothing's going to knock you over. And even if you did, you're just sitting on sand that you can stand up in and be out of the water in most cases. Definitely not very dangerous. People can always pull you out. And boats, it has just deep enough that boats can go across it, but people are walking next to the boats. It's really interesting. So there are opportunities for swimming, wading, uh, and other water activities that are safe, but you have really have to seek out those locations. The open ocean is really for more advanced swimmers or people who are fishing or boating or whatever. And that is, like I said, essentially the entire coast. Now, if you want to see any of these numerous beach communities all along the coast, you have a bit of a challenge. Currently, and for the foreseeable future, Nicaragua does not have a Pacific Coast Highway. Most of the countries along the region do not. It is not common to be able to just drive along the coast. There are spots where you can. El Salvador especially has the capability to do that quite a bit. Uh, but here in Nicaragua, we have no capability for doing that at all. If you want to move from beach to beach, it is traditional to either have to go on dirt roads and wind your way through the mountains and go from, from uh, community to community that way, which can be very difficult and time consuming and you generally need a four by four vehicle. This is what is often done, uh, for example, on or near the Chocolati Road in San Juan del Sur. Uh, if you wanna go to the nearby bays and the nearest beaches, you're often doing it that way. So it's recommended that you have a, a Toyota Hilux or a Jeep Wrangler kind of vehicle. Uh, and that will be generally be fine, but you're talking about slow going on rough roads. It's easy to get stuck. I've done it myself and ended up in some precarious situations you're not dangerous, but it, being stuck miles from any civilization is a very real possibility. Uh, for most movement between beaches, what you would do, and San Juan del Sur again is a good example, you would drive all the way back to the, pa the Pan American Highway, which is about a 15 minute drive from downtown San Juan del Sur. You would then drive north or south uh, another 10 to 20 minutes until you got to the intersection for the next beach that you're interested in. You would then turn off and head back to the coast again another 15 to 20 minutes if you're going to a place that has a good paved road the whole way. Uh, many of the beaches, meaning maybe a third to half do not have paved roads. They're essentially uninhabited or very lightly habited. They, they all have someone. Uh, and so if they don't have a lot of traffic, if they're not a tourist beach, then you may have very rough roads, much rougher than the one I'm standing on. This is a pretty good road. So a few will be like this. Most are more rough because they're right on the water. And so the, 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 the air coming off the ocean tends to make the roads not as pleasant as, as these inland. Uh, you're gonna then have to drive maybe 30 or 40 minutes in some cases, and you may want to have that four by four or big truck to be able to safely go to and from the beach, it's gonna slow you way down. So that kind of experience is very normal when you're trying to move from beach to beach along the coast. You may get lucky in some cases and move pretty quickly, such as El Transito uh, to Puerto Sandino with a number of beaches in between. There you can move, even though the, the road is very slow, there is a direct road among few of, a few of the beaches, including uh, Playa Hermosa. Uh, and with that, um, even though the road is worse than the one I'm standing on, that the fact that you're only moving 20 kilometers an hour doesn't pose a problem. You're able to move to the next beach pretty rapidly, five or 10 minutes. Uh, so, so there are exceptions, but in general, that's how it works. Here in Leon, we have one of the best beach scenarios, which I've said a million times on the show. I'm standing just near, you can see the bus down there dropping people off on Nicaragua 14, also known as the Ponaloya Road. That is the road that runs from the city of Leon that way to the beach of Ponaloya and Las Penitas that way. That is a full Nicaraguan highway. You can move at quite a good clip. You're not gonna hit 100 miles an hour or anything like that, but people will sometimes drive 100 kilometers an hour as a maximum. And uh, you can be out there in as little as about 12 minutes 15 minutes is more common, 17 from downtown, for example. Uh, and the two beaches, Punaloya in the north and Las Penitas in the south, uh, are, are basically the, the highway just comes down and tees into the two of them. And it's essentially one continuous beach. Uh, there you can get to two very large, very busy beaches very quickly with no real effort in between. And you can get to the city of Leon quite quickly. And it's a city 
not, not just a highway. Where San Juan del Sur does the same distance, it only gets to La Virgen, which is uh, just an intersection, right? It's just a road along the lake. There's, there's no town there. There's nothing to really go to. There's like a bar on the water. Uh, you, you can't go shopping. You can't meet people. Like you can't do anything. There's not even like really a parking lot. It's kind of like eight cars or something. And uh, so here we have a great example that we have a very large, not as large as San Juan del Sur, but a very large busy beach. Um, and if we want to go to our adjacent beaches, so this is important, other than Punaloya and, and Las Pinitas, the next beach to the south of Las Pinitas is Salinas Grande. If you go to the north, the next beach uh, to the north of Punaloya is uh, Corinto, the port Porto Corinto, uh, which is the large container port of Chinandega, where the uh, ocean going vessels come in, coming from China predominantly and from the Panama Canal. So it could be from anywhere that's transiting the Panama Canal. That's where they go. It is the current only deep water port in the country. We do have the ability to take relatively deep water um, uh, cruise lines in San Juan del Sur, but they have to anchor off the coast, and then they, they bring um, launches in. Uh, but in Corinto, the container ships are actually able to pour, pull right up into the port, and they've got the cranes that load and unload them and all, all that. So that's unique. Importantly, so these beaches are very close. In both cases, if you went on a hike for the day, you could walk between Ponaloya and Corinto, or Las Pinitas and Salinas Grandes. And we've known people who've done this walking along the beach. You know, definitely take sunscreen, take some water. There is nothing in between. It is empty beach the entire way in between. Beautiful, but empty. You can do that. You could spend the day walking and get to the next beach, or you could take a boat and get there relatively quickly. If you want to go by car, you're looking at a significant drive. You have to drive from Las Pinitas or Ponaloya into Leon, 17 minutes, get to the far side of Leon, figure another five to 10 minutes, and then take the highway either north or south, depending on which one you're going to go to. Let's say you're going to the port of Corinto. You're going to take the road roughly another, once you're in downtown Leon, at least 30 minutes north to, to Chinandega, the, the next major city, and generally it's a little bit farther than 30 minutes, but we'll say. From there, you can turn off and head to its beaches. Again, another, it's a slightly farther than, than it is here, so about 20 minutes uh, to get to the port of Corinto from Chinandega. So, in all, it could take about an hour and a half to drive from Ponaloya to Porto Corinto, even though they're neighboring beaches. It is slightly faster, but similar to go from Las Pinitas down to Salinas Grande. So you have to come into Leon, go south out of the city, drive quite a ways, turn off the highway, and go 15 or 20 minutes out to the coast. This is pretty typical around the country, uh, and we're in a fairly populated area. So anything from Carrasso, Managua, Leon, and the main portions of Chinandega are going to be similar to that. Southern Leon has the one spot where a few beaches are next to each other, like I mentioned at El Transito up to Porto Sandino. If you go to the El Viejo beaches, which are a subset of Chinandega, um, we refer to them as El Viejo beaches because they are associated with the city of El Viejo, even though they're in Departamento Chinandega. This is a little bit confusing, but the Departamento Chinandega is so physically large uh, that we separate its beaches into the two groups, uh, Chinandega having the, the major commercial uh, beaches used for shipping, and El Viejo having more like Ponaloy and Leon, but dramatically less populated and less popular. Very few tourists up there. Those beaches become almost exclusively uh, Nicaraguan beaches, whereas here in Leon you have a very high uh, incidence of expats living on the beach. But certainly nothing like San Juan del Sur, which is almost exclusively an expat beach. So my point of all this is not to break down all the beaches. We have talked about that on other episodes. It is the process of getting from beach to beach that is very difficult. It is extremely time consuming. If your goal is to see many beaches very quickly, you can see many in a day, but you are going to be racing from one to another. Most of the beaches are very small. You can see all of Las Penitas in maybe 15 minutes. 30 minutes would definitely be safe. You could drive the entire length of it, do the loop, check out the middle road, get out of the car, walk around for a few minutes, easily within 30 minutes. Ponaloya, probably a few minutes less, but around the same. If you had an hour, you would absolutely, without any problem, be able to see the entirety of both beaches probably closer to 40 minutes. Uh, and most of the other beaches you would be able to do even faster once you got to them. So 
it's not going to be a giant investment in time to simply see beaches and make really quick decisions about whether or not you like them. But if you want to really get any amount of feel, you want to get out and check out restaurants, you want to walk around for a while, you want to look at properties, you want to get a real serious feel, then you're going to want to spend some time and that's going to make it very difficult getting from beach to beach. So your planning really needs to take in consider into consideration what exactly you want to do at the beaches. Do you want to do a fast survey up and down the coast? You could, in theory, have a single day, skip a lot of beaches, and just hit high points as you go along the country, and potentially make it from the southern point to the northern point in a really long day, but you'd be looking at your first beaches in the dark and your last beaches in the dark. More likely, you're going to want to take a minimum of two days and probably more like three or four and spend some time going up and down the coast. And you're going to want to spend some time deciding ahead of time that you're going to rule out beaches really quickly. You're going to pull in, look and say, this isn't the beach for me and move on and get to the next one quickly. You may want to rule out as many beaches as possible remotely. You may want to say, oh, I'm not interested in one that's this far from a city, or I'm not interested in one that has this many expats, or this one that has this few expats, or I don't want one that's a surf beach. I only want a bay. I don't want a bay. I want to surf. Do that, rule as many out as you can, find the ones that are of interest, and schedule to go see those along the coast. And generally, you can get yourself down to four to six beaches of major interest to you and plan to go to those beaches and in at least two or three of them, spend a night in a hotel and get a feel for what the nightlife is like, because this is important. It's worth noting that until we lived here for some amount of time, we really didn't have a good feel for what the night and day differences were, <laughs> that's not, no pun intended, uh, in our beach community. Uh, San Juan del Sur, I already knew from having spent a lot of time there. I knew exactly what its days were like and its nights were like. But Las Penitas took us a while to get used to because I think it's a lot less obvious because it's more of a Nicaraguan beach and fewer expats. Understanding that huge swaths of the beach go dark at night, not completely, but nothing happens. They go silent. All the hotels close down, the restaurants close down, there's nothing going on. And there's a few isolated spots along the beach, mostly off the water, that get really busy. But they're mostly towny bars. They're not places where expats are likely to, to show their faces, or not very often, once in a while, especially those who've been around for a long time. But also knowing, for example, on Las Penitas, that on Saturday nights, a full dance club opens up and everybody in town goes out. The place is packed. That's important to know. What if you want to go out on Saturday nights and you're like, I don't want to go into the city. Well, Las Bonitas has that. That's something that it offers. But if you're only there on a Tuesday night, you might never guess. Uh, and we were there for a long time before we knew about it, even though we live right down the street from it. So it's even just putting in a day or two on beaches you're really interested in may tell you a lot about them uh, and, and help you make some early decisions uh, quite quickly. That's really a process that I would recommend. Doing anything faster will be very difficult and probably not as productive as you hope. Obviously, just getting in the country and seeing it, even just four hours of driving in the country will tell you so much that you didn't know before. So that's not a bad thing. Use whatever time you do have available, get down and see things. But if you can spend a few days actually staying on the beaches and do a sampler of them, I think you will get a lot more information very, very quickly. And some of the things that people sometimes need to see is stay in the Rivas beaches and stay in the northern beaches and get the feel for the, how the two different cultures are, uh, because they really do tend to be pretty different in ways that are very hard to describe, but once you're there, you feel it. And you're like, oh, oh, the Rivas beaches tend to be like this. The northern beaches tend to be like this. I got it. Now I can just rule out a region um, and choose the one that works for me. Uh, and maybe you're like a lot of people and are like, oh, you know what I'd really like? I'd like a house in one and just a little tiny place in the other. And sometimes I go back and forth. That's a thing too, right? So you have lots of options but assume you're going to put in hours driving between beaches um, and any research you could do ahead of time will be valuable. You do want to stay on them a little bit and build in the huge decisions that you're going to need to make are what distances are you willing or interested in going both when you're looking at the beaches but also when living, right? That's critical. And so if you find a beach, we'll just use Las Penitas as the example. You can go to Las Penitas and then say, okay, I'm going to drive into Leon and pretend to go grocery shopping. I'm going to pretend to go to the bar. I'm going to pretend to go out to a restaurant. What effort did that take? Is that something that I'm comfortable with? And if it's not, if, you, if this one's too much, then you can rule out almost all the beaches as being too far. And pretty much San Juan del Sur is going to be your option. 
And then you can go to San Juan del Sur and say, okay, do I like this culture? Do I like the size of grocery stores that are available to me without going somewhere? If that's good. And then maybe you end up saying, wow, none of these have, I want a large beach community that's bigger than any of these. I need to look somewhere else. And maybe I need to look in Costa Rica. Uh, those are really important things that you can answer pretty quickly. But that determining factor that going going to Pochamil and saying, okay, Pochamil, it's local city is, is Managua. How long is that drive really? And what part of Managua do I end up in? And do I like Managua? Am I gonna be comfortable with that being my city? For us, yes, we'd be completely comfortable going to Managua. In fact, I'm recording this while my wife is at the airport in Managua, uh, helping getting someone on a plane. So, uh, you know, we go to Managua at the drop of a hat these days. Uh, Paul and Dominica and I uh, all go there with, with no effort. Marcella comes in from there all the time. Her kids come in from there all the time. We're going there uh, next weekend for uh, my daughter's birthday. Both of my daughters, when they, they have their birthday parties, they like to go to Managua uh, to go, you know, bowling and laser tag and just do fun, to go to big restaurants and stay in hotels there. They enjoy going to the big city, so that's a treat that we do for their birthdays normally they stay here at home but that's something you need to determine will you like going to managua will you some people hate the traffic some people don't mind at all some people just hate the city some people love it those are things you need to, to decide in most cases because you're going to be using the support cities for your beach quite a bit and if you need the airport you need to decide is uh is one of the el viejo beaches and it's incredibly multi-hour painful drive to managua airport something you're okay with and are you okay with possibly using uh, Honduras for resources because it's so close, right? Those are, there's a lot of those kinds of things that you need to decide relatively quickly uh, to make good decisions about your beaches. Then you can start looking at more. But that, that challenge of not being able to drive up the coast and needing to plan quite a bit of time just for the logistics of getting from one beach town to the next is a major consideration for, for doing a survey of beaches here in Nicaragua. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, please do. You can buy me a coffee right up here, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me, does a lot to help support this channel and uh, helps do things like buy the new camera that we're gonna be surprising you with in two weeks. And uh, uh, remember to share on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Reddit, get on all those places, tell people uh, about the show, uh, hand out our business cards. If you need some, if you see me in person, ask for some, I'll give you a stack. You can just hand them out to people. They got a QR code and people can just scan and find the show, tell them about the show. And if you'd like to check out my other shows, I just uploaded some episodes to Camera Cafe, where I talk about photography and my camera gear, uh, and to Sam IT, where I talk about business and technology, uh, all those things, lots of ways to get more involved Involved and interact with the channel, learn more about me. And of course, if you're looking for relocation assistance, that is the new business that we have. We are info at relocatenicaragua.com. Feel free to reach out whether you're just interested in a house or you're interested in having us take you on a tour of the country. We would love to do that, show you around or even take you to other countries. We really enjoy travel and relocation and, and all those aspects of things. So hit us up. We'd love to help you out with that process. Thanks. I'll see you all tomorrow.